the interest antiphon. This truly is a martyr who shed his blood for the name of Christ, who did not fear the threats of judges, but attained the heavenly kingdom. Good morning. Good morning. Today's mass is being offered for Esther Lingoni. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Today the church celebrates the memory of St. Vincent, uh, not St. Vincent de Paul, but St. Vincent who was a deacon and martyr in the early church in Spain. And uh, he suffered incredible tortures before his death. But he did it with unbelievable joy. And everybody who watched him knew that God had to be moving in him because no one could withstand such torture and be joyful. And so uh, his witness really helped to propel the Christian faith in Spain. So we give thanks to him for him today. Let's now come before the Lord to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, mercifully pour out your Spirit upon us so that our hearts may possess that strong love by which the martyr St. Vincent triumphed over all bodily torments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. A, a tabernacle was constructed, the outer one, in which were the lampstand, the table, and the bread of offering. This is called the holy place. Behind the second veil was the tabernacle called the Holy of Holies. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more, more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who were defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, Cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The responsorial song, God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. 
All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God has his throne with shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For king of all the earth is God, sing, hym sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne with shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came with his disciples into the house. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The Gospel of the Lord. And, and you thought your relatives were bad, huh? So this has been a week where we have recognized uh, that there's a lot of division in our land. Uh, on Monday, as we celebrated Martin Luther King Day, we you know, remembered that there still is racial division in our land. When a new president was inaugurated on Wednesday, uh, Washington looked like a fortress, recognizing that there's a great political divide in our land. On Thursday, we talked about Christian Unity Week and recognized that there still is division and disunity among the different branches of, of Christianity. Uh, and yesterday, for the celebration of Right to Life, we recognized that there's still a great division on when life needs to be recognized as reverent and dignified in the eyes of God. So lots of division, causing people to ask the question of me and I'm sure of others, you know, Father, you think this is the worst time ever in human history? Well, as a student of history, uh, especially as a student of church history, my answer is no. If you study church history and if you study world history, you will see that th these kinds of days have existed many times before. The world history is sort of like a roller coaster, and I don't think things are great now by any means, but I think we have experienced this kind of uh, disunity and division and, and challenge before. You also see that, uh, you know, in, in Jesus' day, there was a, a great divide between the Roman authority and army and the suppressed people of Israel. There were those who decided to pursue appeasement. We'll try to be nice to the Roman emperor and army, and maybe they'll let us do a few things. And there were those who were trying to form a zealot party to get rid of Rome once and for all. So the people were divided. Among the, uh, the religious rulers, there were the Sadducees and Pharisees, completely different theological uh, ideas and religious ideas. Uh, as we know, in Jesus' day, many people uh, were uh, crucified. Crucifixion was a common, a common sight in Jesus' day. And after Jesus died, for at least 300 years, there was a horrific, active persecution of the church and martyrdom 
which resulted in the death of St. Vincent, whom we remember today. And on top of all of that, we see that even in Jesus' own family, there was a division about him. Uh, some, I'm, I'm certain Mary and Joseph were in Jesus' corner, but we hear in today's gospel, this very short gospel, that there were other relatives who said, Jesus has lost it. Who does he think he is? He's one of us. Why is he stepping forward to bring attention to himself and, and possibly have the uh, lawful authorities, the Roman authorities, come after him? Why is he creating all this commotion in our faith? Why is he doing this? And why is he allowing these crowds to gather so that it's impossible for them to eat? Conclusion, he's out of his mind. He's become crazy. So this is, uh, that there's nothing new under the sun. Absolutely nothing. The book of Ecclesiastes says it so well. There's nothing under the sun. But I think this is a challenge to us when we're experiencing division ethnically, racially, politically, religiously, philosophically, and even familially. When we are experiencing that, it's ever more the call to bring Jesus into it. If you've got division in your family, you need to be praying to the Lord all the time to bring unity and to bring peace. That, that prayer should flow off your lips on a daily basis. And for all the other kinds of division we see in our land, which it's just an invitation to bring God more into it. And for those who do, you will be in a much better place in your mind and in your heart than for those who do not. For those who just look at all the bad things and just ruminate over it and stew over it and lose faith and hope and heart over it, you're missing the boat. Because as people of faith, as followers of Jesus, the great gift that we have is to bring the Lord in through our prayer and the Lord will bring a unity inside of us even if things remain divided outside. So uh, let's uh, think about how much division Jesus experienced in his life and in his culture and in his family. People trying to put him into a mental asylum, for goodness sakes. Let's think about that and ask the Lord to be with us as we continue to experience division and lack of unity and lack of peace in many parts of our lives and our world. And now we come before the Lord to bring our prayers and needs. <clears throat> for Pope Francis and all pastoral leaders, may the Lord continue to bless them and guide them in the ways of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for our elected officials, May they be led by the Holy Spirit in creating policies and procedures that affirm the dignity of every person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from illnesses, may the compassionate touch of Jesus be upon them in the hands of those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now please join us in the prayer for protection and healing from the coronavirus and our family prayer. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus. 
that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in their time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prom Sacor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Sacor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henrietta Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with the flame of love through which St. Vincent overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Vincent, the Deacon and Martyr, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Communion antiphon, 
I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in me, in him, bears fruit in plenty. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Vincent faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A uh, reminder this morning at 10 o'clock we have the second graders making their first reconciliation. 
so we'll leave all the lights on and the doors unlocked. Uh, we also have the Baby Bottle Campaign this weekend of the Women's New Life Center. The Women's New Life Center provides ultrasound screening, uh, various other prenatal care, counseling, and they journey with women through unplanned pregnancies. So uh, if you would like, you can participate by taking home a baby bottle, putting in money or a check, and returning it by next weekend. They will be here uh, Monday a week to do the collection. So thank you for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful weekend. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.